The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 21st, the fabulous Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got your back. You can send me an email. Send it off to steve at tfnn.com inside the subject heading if you'd be good enough to put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, every and any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We start our day with a mixed bag here. The mix is coming from the Dow. Uh, and the Russell just turned slightly positive. But the Dow and the Trannies. Dow's up 55. Trannies up 78. Russell is just uh, up slightly. The S&P's down 2. The NASDAQ is off 11. Gold is trading down 23 bucks. And that is where we are going to begin our day with Mr. John Z from the Tiger's Den. John, thanks for calling and thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Steve, I'm doing very well, and thanks for taking this early call. Steve, I wanted to uh, ask you to assist me with COMEX Gold, uh, given the uh, the reversal today. Uh, and to answer this specific question, um, what is it possible, if not likely, according to your work, that that high that was uh, achieved this morning, I think it was like 4 or 5 a.m. as early, uh, is, in fact, the top of a bounce that uh, on, on the spot cash bullion market reached the exact Fibonacci 50% uh, retracement mark. Is it possible, if not likely, that high is a key high, a key lower top high uh, against that May 20th high with, uh, as a consequence, much longer uh, pullback uh, going forward? Okay, excellent question. So I will answer that question this way specifically. First, first is trying to get a gauge on, is it possible that we have a major top inside of gold? In essence, is that a question that you're asking? Did I hear that correctly? Was uh, was this morning's high a key lower high top? Yes. Okay. So it's it's very possible, and, and the reason. So what I what I have up on my screen right now, and even though we're not taking a look at the daily chart, I just wanted to give some perspective on that possibility as an answer. And this is the monthly time frame chart that we have up on our screen here. And this has been something that I've been trying to analyze myself. And on the monthly time frame chart, we are in this month, the month of June. We'll go ahead and complete a TD. Uh, we'll go ahead and confirm a TD nine count top. How important are the monthly TD nine counts inside of Goldilocks? Again, we're looking at the continuous contract, so we can see out here. I'll just pull this over just a tad. Uh, bar number eight. 
made a slightly higher high last month than the prior month. So that sets up the possibility of a TD9 count top. So then I say to myself, well, let's go back and take a look at other TD9 counts and what did they do inside of Goldilocks. So when we go back a little bit further out here, John, we've got a TD9 count top that formed on August of 2020 out there. That certainly led to a move lower. That move almost got back to its breakout area back in November of 2022. So you're talking about a fairly decent, you know, August of 2020 to November of 2022, almost a couple year uh, retracement before gold went ahead and bottomed. Well, gold also on a monthly time frame has a confirmed sell the D point pattern. Last month was a bear shooting star. The month before that was also a bear shooting star. So you've got two different types of tops. Not that that matters. But right now I'm going to focus on on the on the TD9 counts. If I go back and look at the next TD9 count, even though there's one that shows up here, folks, between July of 2016 and October of 2016, that high took place on bar number seven. So that was not what I would call a qualified TD9 count. By the way, with regard to the most recent TD9 count bottom, that takes us back to December of 2015. And that obviously has been a significant low out there. First, and also, um, uh, so, so let me go back even further out here. If we take a look at, this is a pretty significant top that formed in September of 2011. Now, in September 2011, not only did it generate a TD9 count top there, it was also a Rhodes Mintum indicator. So that went from September of 2011 before we saw any kind of bottom, which was a TD9 count bottom in 2015. So a four-year retracement. Okay, so that should have us a little bit concerned. Here's another TD9 count top that formed, and this one was in December of 2010. And what we saw take place there is price pulled back and tested and rejected that green oscillator and change line. So that's acted like support. If we fast forward to where we're at today, you can see that the oscillator and change line right now is at 22.22 or 22.26. We know that if price is going to pull back further, that number is going to move lower. But right now we use that for a gauge out there. So what I would say first is on a longer term basis, there is a possibility um, that either we get a pullback or retracement to the 220. 2226-ish type area, or that we, and if price gets below that, or that we could have a top that could be of consequence for a period of time. So that was just the first thing. I know that didn't answer your question, but I needed to do that first so that we all have perspective on that as a real possibility. So now let's open up the daily time frame chart. And then the daily time frame chart, what I would suggest is that if price were to close below, um, if price were to close below the low from June 7th, and that low out there is at 2304.20. You don't need me to tell you this, but obviously that would then tell us that we have an, likely have an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Where would that possibly take us to? If we, and if we take a look at the A to B area out here, and I'll just move this over, John, to the C point, which would be, I would really use this morning's high at this stage here. Uh, that could get us down into the 2211 area. So now we have the 2222, which we said price would, um, the oscillator and change will move lower as price moves lower. So that would line up with this A to B equals CD pattern. But to answer your question specifically, as of right now, 1114 in the morning, I can't make that call if that's a significant high. And the reason is because we're trading or consolidating with inside its daily profile. And price has got support between 2324 and 2335. And I would just make that swing point low a key area to, to observe there. Now, I know we're going into break and you're welcome to stay on. Did that answer your question or do you have some additional questions that maybe I can look into during the break? No, just a quick follow-up. Uh, when you return, I'll take just 30 seconds at that time. Sounds great. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be back with Mr. Z inside our Tiger Stand in just a few. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with John in uh, Philly. One last piece of information that I want to provide to everybody out there, and you, John, then uh, you can take it away, is the 23-22-70 level. 23-22-70 is the uh, daily TD9 count breakout area. We can see that price closed below just slightly for one session, and that was on uh, May uh, June 13th, and we got right back above it the following day, so that was a false breakdown. But if we do get two consecutive closes below 23-22-70, John, that would then signal to me that we should head to the 2205 level uh, so just one more piece of information and now it's up to as as, as ed mcmahon used to say it's time for you to take it away uh, it, steve uh, it, first say that thanks so much for that discussion uh, yeah. second i'm very happy you highlighted uh, your observations on that monthly chart with that emerging possible possibly completing TD nine count pattern. Yes. I, I will lastly say, uh, yesterday when gold rallied thirty bucks, uh, I was thinking to myself, well, okay, what's this about? Uh, is this uh, preparing to launch to retest the May highs? Uh, and that was an unanswered question this morning when that uh, August futures made its twenty three eighty two high. I went back and double checked my spot cash bullion. Okay. I repeat, spot cash bullion, not futures, because futures has embedded um, uh, uh, costs, uh, sure. and uh, that 2382 uh, COMEX futures high, that was equivalent to a 2369 cash high. That was an exact FIB 50%. We went there, we stalled, we hung there, and then we started reversing. Interestingly enough, Steve, in uh, the time that we've been talking, 
uh, August futures have just busted and are accelerating the decline underneath your apogee pivots. But uh, I entertain the idea that the high this morning uh, was a high that to uh, taking out those June 7th lows. So uh, I'm not forecasting that, but I'm certainly uh, entertaining that scenario as being uh, distinctly possible. So thanks so much. Very helpful, as always, Steve. You bet. And, John, always good to hear from you and have a wonderful weekend. Uh, thanks so much for uh, calling in. Much appreciated. Um, as far as – let me just say, is there anything else here in gold that I wanted to share with everyone? And, and it's really this. So even if the daily starts falling apart, and we took a look at those um, uh, monthly, uh, you know, TD9 count tops in the past and what that might mean, but let's take a look at what's going on in the weekly chart. So we just have all the levels that we're taking a look at. So on the weekly chart for gold, you've got a bullish structured weekly profile. Bullish structure meaning that you always have a top and a bottom. Top is where sellers are at, bottom is where the buyers are at. And the center is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value. So let's just say an equal number of buyers and sellers. Well, we take a look at how close in proximity the center is to the uh, uh, bottom. That creates what I call that buy zone or bullish structured profile. So the key level there to be watching then is if price were to close below 22.99 on a weekly basis, that would be signaling to further move lower. And that next price target would be at about 20.64.10 uh, when we take a look at the August contract for gold uh, for its weekly time frame out there. Is there anything else? Well, and if that level fails, then you got to go back. Then we would go back. <coughs> Excuse me. What did I say on the weekly? <coughs> I said uh, the uh, breakout is at 2064. So that would be well below, at least at this moment in time, that would be well below that <coughs> the monthly oscillator and change line, which is at the 2225 level out there. And what we don't know is if price got down there, would that then hold? Because that would be a normal or natural level of support. As an example, let's move off of gold. Let's go take a look at what's going on in the daily equity future contracts. Speaking about how that green oscillator and change line can absolutely be a level of support. Um, let's go take a look. We'll get those screens popped up here momentarily. And here are the four horsemen, the daily equity future contract. If you look at the ES and the NQ, they're the only two that have that TD9 count status. And if we take a look at what they have done today so far, what do they do? They have pulled back and they have tested both of them and rejected those green oscillator and change line. I had mentioned uh, during the 11 a.m. update that I have different sets of profiles. And here is that second set of profiles, for example, on the ES Mini. Now, this, again, is a new profile that is attempting to form. We will not have confirmation on this until Sunday. That doesn't mean we ignore the data. In fact, we use the data. Right now, based upon the calculations, if price were to close below that oscillator and change line, and that's what we'll need to do, and this is a slightly bare structured ES mini. If price were to close below the oscillator and change line today, 5524 is the current print there. Then that would suggest to you and I that price would make its way back to support at 5474. Now that is a much different support level then when we would take a look at my black background charts, the black background chart has support at 5512. So you'd watch 5512 first because that's still a very valid um, uh, calculation out there. And so if price closed below the oscillator and change line, you'd be looking to see does 5512 hold. If 5512 does not hold, then we would say 5474 would be its price target. Now in the NQ, we don't have to worry necessarily. We do have different profile levels, but we have profiles. We have profiles that have absolutely formed. So you got the TD9 count top. It was uh, tested and rejected yesterday. And now we have a new profile. The one in the black background chart that we looked at earlier, the uh, support level is at 20.029. So if price were to close below 20.029 today, that and then it has to also close below that green oscillator and change line. So really, we can see that number is lower. So that's the key level to watch is 19.942 or thereabouts. If price were to close below that, that price would make its way down slightly more to the 19. 802 level. Now, 19802 is going to be the real key level of support to watch. Why is that, Stevo? Well, if we pull this chart back, we'll see how far I've got data for the September contract. Let's just come off of the low out here. 
that formed uh, back in uh, April. We take a look at the April lows. There's a new profile formed on April the uh, 23rd. This is the daily time frame chart that we're looking at. Price never got down and tested or busted through that support level. Another profile forms on the trading day of May 23rd. Now, probably all of us can remember May 31st when price just uh, careened to the downside. One of our uh, traders in the den, uh, Maria, I believe this was a day she made the call that said she wouldn't be surprised to see the ES Mini uh, we'll take a look at the NQ right now, finish in the red. And certainly it did, which was an amazing call. But here's what we also know. We'll just take a look at the NQ. The point I wanted to make here is price pierced below the bottom of that bullish of that, of that profile that formed uh, right around that May uh, end of May time frame, and the bottom held. And in fact, the next trading session, we had that same thing. And then two trading sessions later, we got above that green oscillator and change on, and it's been off to the races ever since. So we have a TD9 count top with price testing and rejecting that green oscillator and change line. Now, when you get to a top, you don't know if that's going to be the support that holds and that's another buy area. Slightly different than when your price is moving higher and just simply no pattern, no topping signal or what have you, and price pulls back to that green oscillator and change line. Those are buy entry points, especially in a strong momentum area out here. So today, you got to watch those oscillator and change lines. If price holds there, what we have really then is those TD9 counts start to turn to new Neutral versus bearish. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and, most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com.
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, now, folks. Let's get to some of the requests that have come in. We've got four. Would love more, but let's start off with the four that we've got. This one actually came in yesterday. It was from Tom C. He wanted to take a look at the uh, Steel ETF uh, SLX out there. Um, so when we take a look at the SLX. This actually went ahead and completed a, a TD nine count bottom pattern on uh, June the 18th out there. Yesterday we saw a rally up towards that red oscillator and change line. We also had a new profile that formed on June 18th. So Tom, let me give you that data. You've got support, which has been tested this morning, at the bottom of the profile at 6547. Your sell zone on a rally would be between 6706 and 6746. If price were able to overtake 6746, close above it, then we'd be looking to move up towards 6941. 6941 is where price broke down from, courtesy of that TD nine count pattern out there. So what you'd like to watch today is does support hold mean that 6547 level? If it does, we should see another rally towards that green oscillator and change line at the 6647 level. So really up above, up overhead, you have three potential battlegrounds. One at the oscillator and change line at 6647, the second one at 6706, and the third one at 6746. And of course, the fourth one would be if you get above 6746, you're back to the 6941 level. That's what the daily chart shows us. Now, I'm going to open up this daily chart. Just curious, when was the last time price closed above that red os or oscillator and change line? Turns out the last day that we saw price above that, this is the steel ETF, SLX, was on the trading day of May 21st. Today is a month later, June 21st. So if you're looking to go along, what I would caution you, I mean, you, so you, you probably have the good reward risk right now. Your stop would have to be placed below bar number nine of his TD9 count. That means below the low of 64.68. We're at 65.59. Uh, By the way, the average true range on this, oh, shoot, I don't have that. Where did that go? Oh, my goodness. I'm just looking at a different screen that usually has that information, and it ain't there. I'm going to just check to see if I've got – wow, that was erased. So I'll have to put that back in there. So far, I can't give you that, but just look at the last 10 days, and you'll be able to come up with the average true range there. So you could take a position now. The safer place would be a price close above that oscillator and change. I was at 66.47. Now, the problem there with the trade, if you wait till then, you don't know how price is going to deal with that sell zone between 67.06 and 67.46. Let's see if the weekly chart offers us any additional information. The information here is that price is trading below profile support. Closed below it last week. Trading below it this week, this is suggesting that price would want to make the move to 62.06. Well, if that TD9 count bottom gets taken out, that would be a close below 64.68. Then that seems like an easy solution, uh, uh, an easy, um, an easy uh, uh, price objective to get to that breakout level. So there, that's saying caution, especially because price is still below that red oscillator and change line for its daily time frame. And the monthly right now, it has a buy zone between 56.81 and 61.68. So you got 61.68, 62.06 on the weekly chart out there. That's probably your key area of support. But if you wanted to go ahead and fire away, I get it. I just gave you all the information that I can with regard to the last month with price being unable to take out that red oscillator and change line. And so I hope that that information helps you out. And uh, thanks for waiting an extra day uh, for that information. Nicholas wrote in earlier and he was asking, will the SMHs fill the gap? The gap that he's referring to is one between June 11th and June 12th out there. Now, folks, there are tons of gaps inside of the SMHs. There's a gap out here between the day of June 4th and June uh, 5th. That has not gone filled. There's a gap out here between the day of uh, May 2nd and uh, May 3rd out there. And if we go back, we could probably find even more open gaps. 
What you have that we didn't have yesterday, Nicholas, is we now have new profile information. So to answer that question, all we have to do is rely upon that data. And that data says if price were to close below the bottom of its profile, support, at 261.86, then I would say the answer to your question would be yes, it'll at least go fill that gap, but maybe it will fill other gaps down below. What it would really do once it gets below 261.86, what it should do is move towards its breakout level. And its breakout level was at 246.71. So right now, I don't believe that we can conclude that even though we've got a TD9 count top out here, that price is going to go ahead and fill that gap. The, what the, the, you know, our laboratory will tell us, and the laboratory says, you've got support at 261.86. So thank you for asking about this because that's new information that we didn't have yesterday. We have it today, and that would be the levels to watch out there. So Nicholas, I hope that helps you out. And uh, the chart is going to answer that, or price is going to answer that for you if it can bust through. Now, we didn't get down exactly to that support level. I think just pennies above it. The low today was 262 one versus 261.86 out there. So at this stage here, I'm going to say support is held. It was tested and held. I don't, we don't use these necessarily right to the tick out there. And really, we use the body, the candle, which is the essence of price. And as long, So I'm going to say that price got back to support this morning and it held inside the semis. Uh, let's go on to our next question out here. This one coming in from Dan in uh, New York City out there. And Dan is asking, is uh, this LIT, is it forming a TD nine count pattern? So very observant of you. And the answer is it is completing that pattern today. This is the bar following bar number nine. What should happen is price should rally up towards the 4123, 4132 level. That is both the oscillator and change line and the bottom of its profile. Now, that's what it should do. Will it do that? Well, what we don't like here necessarily, Dan, is uh, that we have price that is now looking like it's going to end the day below the bottom of its weekly profile. And that's at 4084. Maybe it's just a one hit wonder, a one week wonder, and price gets back above it uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, next week, next Friday. Uh, but I don't know if it will or it won't. The other thing that I don't like about this chart, the weekly chart that is, Dan, is that price is now also trading not just below profile support, but below that red oscillator and change line. What it at least says is we should see a test of the low from the week of uh, February the 9th. So that low, let's see, maybe we've gotten there. I don't know. 39.26 is that low. So far today we've been, or this week we've been down to 39.32. So do those six cents make a difference? Yeah, I think it does. This is lighter volume, 1.2 million shares. We had a holiday day off, um, but this on a weekly basis has volume of 2.7. So it's certainly coming in, even if we add a day's worth of volume, it's coming in lighter. What you really want to see, this is the technique that Tom uh, has taught us all, and that is a true test and rejection of that swing point. That means price would need to close below, uh, not close below, move below 39.26 and then move back above it. Then what you'd be looking for is some kind of sign of strength out there, not on the weekly basis. That sign of strength would come on the uh, daily time frame. So if we're hitting that low, just out of curiosity in a weekly time frame, where are we at on the daily time frame? It was a wave seven bottom that formed. The volume there was 715,000 shares today. Today we are at 119. So lighter volume today, but I would still hold off and at least let price test that low on the weekly time frame. But you are correct. You've got a daily TD9 count up. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97, and with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. I want to I want to stick with the LIT for Dan New York City. You know, just some observations, and I'm going to use the uh, SLX chart as an example. So let's take a look at the uh, current. We've got that current TD9 count bottom that formed, uh, completed actually on the trading day of June 18th, and at the same time that it was doing that, it had formed that new profile. So what that gave us, it gave us a it gave us a, a back wall, so to speak, a support level to be able to rely upon out there. With versus uh, this completed also a TD9 count bottom on uh, June the 5th. But there, price was below profiles, below that red oscillator and change line. We saw a two-day movement to, you know, which is normal, your two-bar knee-jerk reaction, in this case here, was to the upside, and then price resumed lower. So having that profile is very helpful. Now let's go take a look back at the LIT charts out here, and let's go see what they're doing. So when we take a look at the daily time frame, what do we have? We've got that TD9 count pattern completing today, below the bottom of that profile. In fact, we are now going to be two days below the bottom of this profile. And that is a bearish structured profile. So on a rally, if you were to take a long position here, Dan, you would expect a counter trend move would end at 41.32. If it's more than a counter trend move, price would be able to take that out. But we are below profile on that red oscillator and change line. I'm not suggesting that you take that trade. If we take a look at the last time that uh, LIT formed a TD9 count bottom, this was back on April the uh, 25th out there. And when that was forming, actually on bar number nine on the trading day of April 24th, we had a new profile formed. Now, price closed below that on bar number nine. The bar following bar number nine, price got right back above that level, a one-hit wonder. So at least you then had uh, something at your back to help you out. So that's comparing lit and you know when is a when is a more ideal time to take that TD9 count, whether it's a resistance TD9 count top or support. And certainly those profiles provide us with some very useful information. So I wanted to make sure that I pass that on to you. Hope that that makes sense and thanks so much for the question. Uh, Dan, a, another Dan inside our Tiger's Den, wanted to take a look at GSM and wanted to get the status update on its TD9 counts. So we take a look at it as an example. Here, this formed a TD9 count bottom on June the 13th. 
Price was below profile. Price was below its oscillator and change line. And guess what? That very next trading session, it failed. Now, Price was getting back and testing this breakout level of support, which held back on June 17th, the very next day, right below that level. We are in bar number six as we speak right now. So this may go on to form another TD9 count pattern out there. But the earliest that that would take place would be on Tuesday, which would be bar number eight. So it'd be Tuesday through Friday of next week when GSM could give us a TD nine count. If we look at the weekly time frame chart out there, the weekly time frame chart is right now trading below the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. Now, of course, we'd have to really wait till next Friday to determine whether or not this was a one hit wonder. But when we take a look at the daily time frame chart, it's providing us with some information that says, hey, this is probably not a one hit wonder on the weekly time frame, or what it's saying is price is likely to pull back to its breakout level. So I would say, Dan, the price target, certainly on the daily time frame, we'd look at prior swing points. Well, that's from the swing point of April 22nd, and that low is 489. But if we take a look at the breakout level on the weekly time frame, it's at 467. So I'd say where price is likely headed to on GSM is to those levels, that swing point on the daily bottom or the 467 level out there. And there's really nothing on the monthly chart that's helping us other than price right now is testing monthly support of its uh, profile levels out there but we still have you know a full week to go before the month comes to an end well today's 21st we have more than a week wait 21 7 it's gonna be 28 no, so it's going to end. I believe the month ends on a Friday out there. You can check my uh, my math in my head out there, but I don't think June has 31 days, so I'm pretty sure of that one. Um, so that's what's going on. We take a look at GSM, and you are more than welcome. S&P inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at High Ho Silver. So let's go take a look at its charts out there. We'll pull up its charts. Uh, that's the goal. Don't want to do that. Let's pull up Silver. Now, What's the difference between silver and uh, gold on a, a monthly time frame? A ton. Remember, on the monthly time frame, we're looking at gold having a TD9 count top. We don't have that here. All we have in the case of silver is really a double top out there. Uh, but no, in fact, uh, it's it did have a sell the D point pattern that formed out here in April of uh, 2024. And then last month, price closed above it, so it negated that signal out there. This would need a new bearish reversal candle to confirm a sell the D point. So when we take a look at the monthly chart for silver, it's not looking at all like Goldilocks. If we take a look at the weekly chart, it has a Rhodesmintum indicator top, that top form on the week of uh, May 31st out there. Price right now is testing that green oscillator and change line. It did the same last week. So its signal as we speak right now, S&P is neutral. If we look at the daily time frame, the daily time frame chart for silver has what? It has a Rhodesmintum indicator top. What is price doing? It's trading inside its profile. Um, it closed above it yesterday. Looked like we were in breakout mode, but that appears to just simply be a one-hit wonder. We've had a couple of those one-hit wonders out here. For example, we had closed above that profile on June 3rd, right back below it the next day. Closed above it on June 6th, right back below it the very next trading session. And that's what we've got going on right now. But we can see descending trend line out there, but still support has not failed. And the first level of support here would be at 28.64. And this is the daily time frame chart that we're taking a look at. And below that, if price were to close below that level, we'd be looking and move to 26.65 out there. Let's go see if there's anything going on on the intraday charts to assist us with this further move lower. Turns out that the two hour time frame chart is in bar number eight right now. Now in about 12 minutes, that's gonna complete bar number eight. That says at 2 p.m., silver could form a TD nine count bottom, and at 4 p.m. it could complete that pattern out there. So I'd keep an eye on the uh, uh, two hour time frame chart. Uh, the 30 minute chart needs a spike below the low that uh, took place uh, in the last half hour, meaning we need to see a at least a spike below 29.58 to trigger some type of TD nine count bottom pattern out there. It does need to do it during this half hour, which is going to complete in 11 minutes now, but it needs to do that on either bar number nine or bar number 10. And bar number nine must close below the uh, close of bar number five, and that means a close below 29.83 in order for that pattern to potentially uh, form. But again, you've got to close, you've got to move below, tick below, spike below the low of the last half hour out there. Is there anything else that Stevie has out here? Support? Certainly on the five-hour, the four-hour time frame, it's at the 29.46 to 29.49 level out there. So I'd keep my eyes on the 30 
and the uh, two-hour time frame chart. And uh, you've also got that support level down at 28.64. So S&P, I hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for your question. So now what do we want to do out here? Now what do we want to go take a look at? <laughs> we haven't looked at any intraday stuff for the uh, futures contract, the equity future contract. So let's go take a look at those. And we can see here uh, price gets back to support potential support on the daily time frame, the green oscillator and change line. As that was unfolding, the 60 minute was confirming a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, as was the 30. It's the second one of the morning for the ES mini. So we know that the buyers are really trying to hold that daily green oscillator unchanged line. Do they know, even know that it exists? No. Do I even know how it works? I don't. But what I do know it works, and it's worth us paying attention to. Folks, this is an easy thing for you to learn out there. Um, I teach it. You can subscribe to Mastering Probability. Um, so that's what I see on the intraday. We can see along the entire bottom, all kinds of bottoms trying to form out there. Is any resistance failing? Just the 10-minute resistance level, which was at 55.38. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. You got the Dow down 23, S&P's up 2, NASDAQ 100's up 37, Russell's off 77 cents, semis are down 5 points, trade is up 69. We've got a good old mixed bag. We take a look at Qualcomm out here. 
Qualcomm yesterday confirmed a Roche Mint Dimindicator top. It formed that Three River Evening Star pattern. And what did it do today? It has tested and so far rejected its buy zone of its bullish structure daily profile. So 209.77 is the key level of support, Dano, that you would be watching to the downside. But at this stage here, support is held. And the overall signal of that Roche Mint Dimindicator top switches to neutral. We look at the weekly time frame. You've got a wave number seven that's present. That needs a lower high for the weekly time frame. You've got bar number eight that's going to complete. But that says that that TD9 count top on a weekly basis might take place next week or might be the week after out there. So right now, strong leg bull. It's neutral on the daily time frame. The oscillator and change line is up at the 221.03 level. The top of the profile is at 220.20. If price closes above that, it's going to go retarget that recent high from just a few days ago. And to finish off the show folks we had taken a look at the es mini let's go take a look at the nq as we mentioned the nasdaq 100 now in the green out there at 37 buckaroonies if you look at that bottom panel 10 15 30 and 60 all of those have roads meant to indicator bottoms but now we're starting to see on a 30 minute basis looks like we're going to close above resistance which is at 20 044 and as long as price remains above that we're likely to rally even further out there if you look at the top row Look at the two-hour chart. That's confirming a Rosemont indicator top, a uh, bottom. That says that says watch 20070 or thereabouts. Maybe add a couple of bucks to that. Let's call it 20072. If price closes above that, you're likely to see a rally. It would take us up to the 20187, maybe even 20264 level out there. If you look at the five-hour chart. Prices held support, 19999 out there. So that's the key level that you'd be watching inside of the NQ. But right now, as we began, we have those nice TD9 count tops on the daily time frame. But what price has done today, it's pulled back and thus far tested and rejected that green oscillator and change line. That turns those signals at the moment to neutral. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Thanks so much for joining us this week. I will look forward to seeing you on Magnificent Monday. Please have a fabulous weekend. Be safe out there and take care.